Okay, now that we have light burns set up, let's engrave something for real. And one of the first things you'll notice here is I have to elevate the machine to get the rotary to fit under the laser head. And I've used one of the oldest tricks in the book, and that is just to use four cans of food from the pantry. And it works like a champ. So all I've got here is just a piece of a broom handle, and it is not perfectly round. So under conditions like this, where your rollers are close together and your item's not perfectly round, you wanna go as slow as possible to prevent a lot of jerking around movements from the roller. So another thing to notice is I've measured everything with these digital calipers here, and these are a lifesaver here. So I highly recommend that you get a set of digital calipers. Okay, let's go ahead and hit start, see what happens. Uh, the cut might be out of bounds. Continue anyway. Yes. And again, this thing is not perfectly round, so it may look a little stair stepped or something. But that's not the fault of this rotary device. That's the fault of the item that I'm engraving here. But so far it looks pretty good. And I have the power really cranked up. So it almost looks like a fill operation, but it's actually a line operation. So again, I just want to reiterate, the slower you go, the more likely it is that you'll get straighter results, especially in a condition like I have here where my little broomstick isn't perfectly, perfectly round. And I have this framed up, but it's mostly just for showing that the rotary operates. Normally I wouldn't put a framing box on something like this. A lot of people like to go fast, but I like to go slow. I think you get better results the slower you go on these rotary devices. Of course, that's not great for production. All right, so let's push this out of the way without knocking the rotary off track. And it works. Acma rules.